Live from Soho, New York City, it's Web Electronics with Becky Stern. Hey everybody, I'm Becky Stern, with me is Phil. Yes. We bring you the wearable electronics every Wednesday, live. Yes. Right here is what we're doing. Becky goes to the mountains every morning and she picks the most beautiful wearables for everyone. Fresh from the fields. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're looking very festive today. Why is that, Becky? It's my is birthday. It? Oh, it's your birthday. <laughs> you know what? What are the odds that your birthday falls on a Wednesday? <laughs> like once and, every and, seven years? And, and, <laughs> yeah, right? Well, we didn't have wearable like, electronics Becky Stern seven years ago, but I think we'll have it seven years from now. Yes. That's cool. Hopefully. Were you, do you remember, do you know the time? Was it 2 p.m. on the dot? No. It was you're like, very timely. It was, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I aim to be timely. Yeah. I think it was in the morning, eight something. So you got there early. My mom's watching. She can press button in the comments. I bet mom. <laughs> she remembers better than I do. Becky's mom who has uh, some crafty things that she's done with Adafruit too. Yeah. Uh-huh. She's so crafty. Yeah. Not okay. only, not the least of which is teaching me all of the crafts that I know how to make. Okay, well that's good. That then I bring to, oh, she didn't teach me how to make jewelry. Anyway, what's on today's show, Phil? On today's show, the code is Tiara. 10% off everything in the Adafruit store in the floor and wearables category expires at 11.59 p.m. tonight. Wearable Wednesday. That's where we show you what's going on. We debut a project. Maybe it's this Tiara. Material spotlight. <laughs> we share you uh, with you a cool material, show you how to use it, teach you about it. All that and more. Tools we love. All the tools in the Adafruit shop we love to use, to show you how to use them safely most of the time. You got questions, Becky has answers. If you have questions at any time during the show, please post them up in the comments. I will save them for a future show where you could be eligible to win the show's giveaway if we answer your question on the show. All that and more on Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. Now, um, throughout the show, I'm going to do this. <laughs> it's your fanfare. This is music that I think the, the first day you started at Adafruit, I played when you walked through the, you did. the door. You did, and then I came back from lunch and you did it again, and yeah. then I came back from a break and you did it again, and it's like, Phil, thanks yeah. for playing my fanfare. And we were gonna, now that we have the RFID on the door lock, I think we could make it do it again. We could when do it. When it scans my key, it could play my fanfare. We could do it. So until um, someone uh, replaces me or stops me from operating these shows, I'm gonna do that today. So you're not gonna know what's going on either. Oh, I'm not gonna You'll know. be all serious. You'll be like, make sure you put the thread in the something something, and like that. Da -da, da -da, da -da. Maybe That's it's fine. going on right now. You don't know. You still know. It makes a great phone <laughs> ringtone, by the way. Yeah. My fanfare. All right. So before we get started, I gotta pay some bills. That birthday cake's not gonna pay for itself this week. Please help <laughs> Phil pay for my birthday cake. Never <laughs> settle. <laughs> In the floral wearables category. As as All birthday doing. long with yeah. code Tiara. I could have made the code birthday nah. or happy birthday nah. Becky or Becky is the greatest, but um, I yeah. thought that the Tiara was self-aggrandizing enough. Yeah, because I can't believe I'm typing in birthday Becky. Right? Well, I get 10% off. <laughs> you get 10% off. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, you let's could keep use this it thing to buy up. some supplies for your Tiara. In addition to being it being your birthday, it's also wearable, wearable Wednesday. Wednesday. Every, but it's wearable Wednesday every Wednesday. Yeah. And this Wednesday, Leslie Birch has started blogging for Wearable Wednesday on the Adafruit site. Yay! Welcome, yeah. Leslie. To look out for her posts. Yeah, um, what projects do you think people know her for? They might recognize this floor umbrella with LED strip. We're actually going to make it a guide on the learning system, so look out for that upcoming. More Leslie, more. You may have seen her in such projects, <laughs> <laughs> such as the umbrella that wouldn't stop blinking, or. Um, That's just something else from Wearable oh, Wednesday. This it is, is another from her, post. But she commented on it. That's why I thought this was part of her. Yeah, she was. Uh, she's uh, in the Google Plus community and yeah. also on our um, Google Plus page. Mm -hmm. In there, commenting about Wearable. So look for Leslie. Say hi. This is another project from Wearable Wednesday. Today, um, it's a heart rate informed running jacket. So this nice lady was sick of getting um, like run into by bicyclists on the um, the Greenway there. That looks like it's down in um, the old Adafruit Hood in the financial district. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe it's in that's Brooklyn, the, or maybe it's in Brooklyn Bridge Park. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, she um, uh, made a running jacket that like blinks with her heartbeat. She's wearing a Garmin heart rate watch, I think, and, it, and yeah. used um, one of the N type. Uh, receivers to hook up to our Arduino and then make the LED animations play along uh, yeah. to the rhythm of her beating heart, which is quite, you know, expressive safety. It's nice. Cool project. Next up, there's a book. This is a book um, called Textile Messages. It's a, a long time coming re uh, accumulation of research and edited um, by Leah Beakley and a bunch of other uh, researchers who were doing work in e-textiles. So if you're looking for that kind of information like a graph that shows the conductivity of conductive fabric every time after you've washed it for 15 times, that yeah. graph is in this book. 
and like lots of other papers about uh, pedagogy and, and very academic stuff relating to uh, teaching and teaching computer science yeah. uh, in after school programs uh, using e-textiles. So a lot of, um, this is like all of the academic yeah, research I so far. I skimmed through it and uh, Lee recently had a talk about the maker movement and uh, the, the gender balance in this. And I thought it was interesting because in her talk, um, she rightfully pointed out, you know, there's uh, magazine covers that have guys on it, there's magazine covers that have women on it, there's uh, DIY friendly um, publications, there's DIY events, there's all these things. And one of the things I liked was the, the, the thing that I think she was saying is there should be more companies like Adafruit, woman-led, um, we don't really separate projects, here's things for women to do, here's right. things for guys to do. In fact, it's, it's really blurry. It's for things for everyone to do. Super blurry. So when you look in the book, they, uh, there was actually a breakdown. Because I, I, instantly I looked in the back and I looked for Adafruit and, I, and it said, here's one of the companies that, yeah. that makes all this, this cool stuff. So I thought it was really neat and I think you're doing a really good job kind of bridging um, the projects because I see a really big diverse group of people doing projects, not just guys, not just girls, not just old folks, not just young folks, just across the board. All mixed together. And like this yeah. book talks, it does talk about the gender balance and it's something to, it's something to talk to that like, you know, needs to be discussed in the whole engineering discussion in general. But um, we try to not, we try to be like agnostic as much as we can as far yeah. as skill level and age and gender and yeah. all these different things, but and background. But it does have some interesting information. I think they used a lot of SparkFun sales data from, because Lilypad was a SparkFun yeah, yeah, Spark yeah, yeah, yeah. product. Um, like, uh, who is buying them? Who is buying them? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, and they, they would just guess at their gender, or, or they would sell. They some of them would self-report, and they'd have graphs of like Arduino's and the gender breakdown of Arduino Uno yeah. sales versus Lilypad sales, and showing that there was a marked increase in in um, women buying the Lilypad, and and yeah. um, and how interesting that is. Yeah, um, Lamore has an article that she wrote on OpenSource.com because it's Women in Open Source yeah. Week. And uh, the, 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 I'll just skip to the end of the story. Uh, every week, Lamar does Ask an Engineer. And that's kind of the pro, that was the, like, one of the first shows before we did uh, Wearable Electronics. And uh, she tells the story about the parent who emailed because they saw uh, Amanda Wozniak and Lamar on the show. And this little kid said, it was some guy's daughter, said, do boys do engineering too? Because this kid only saw women doing engineering, women talking about engineering. So the, the quote that uh, we like to throw around here and that Lamore likes a lot is we are what we celebrate. So it's really good to see a lot of uh, high profile women doing electronics, doing these type of things. So, uh, so I then it looks normal. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I read, I, so I read just one little piece of the book. Um, go get it. Good book. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, it's got, it's a long time coming, meaning it has some, a lot of really meaningful research stuff that yeah. like has been published in a lot of academic conferences and stuff, but that you haven't been able to get your hands on. So buy this book. Um, it has a picture of my lily pad embroidery in it. That's my only contribution. Okay, next up. <laughs> Speaking of your contributions, look at this wonderful thing you did. Ooh, thanks. I look yeah. at this wonderful photo that Andrew Tangle took. Yeah, that's really nice. <laughs> um, also, stripes. My favorite color is stripes. Yeah, stripes. It's, it's now, it's like, there's Adafruit black and then there's Adafruit, the, the other color that we have is stripes. Well, there's this combination, right? Like uh, T, who works here, is a member of the Rude Mechanical Orchestra and mm -hmm. their colors are green and stripes. So they okay. have green and black and white stripes and like uh, black and white stripes, I don't know, I just like the sweater. It just cleaned it. It's so. like a spin out elf group or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I know, right? Okay. Yeah, Gothy for sure. Elf. There's one picture that we took that I, is in the learning doc of the, the sweater with the green and the stripes. Yeah. Okay, so what is it? This is a, I have a feeling this is a setup for a video. Yeah, this is our video this week. Um, I was like, Phil, on my birthday, we will be doing a tiara project. End of story. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got what you wanted. <laughs> I got what I wanted for my birthday. All right. And that was to make some tiaras for you. But but not only is there one tiara, there are three tiaras. So please watch this video and enjoy. All right. You can make a crown of light for your birthday or prom this year using NeoPixels and Gemma, Adafruit's tiny wearable electronics platform. Just arrange a handful of pixels and sketch out your design. We made a 3D printed band to serve as the base, but an old headband works just as well. Strip the insulation from a piece of solid core hookup wire to get started. This will be the pixel ground bus. Attach perpendicular wires by threading them through the headband and crimping the ends with pliers. Solder in place, then create your desired silhouette with your wire clippers. Strip and bend over the wire ends, then solder on your NeoPixels. Just double check they're all in the same orientation. Use bits of wire shaped like staples to make the data connections between each pixel, then add more wires extending from the positive side. Add a power rail across the top and connect everything up to Gemma at the input side of the pixel chain. This is a great project to practice your soldering skills and a joy to make if wire's your jam. 
For a different approach, print out this tiara, designed to hold a piece of high-density NeoPixel strip. You can find all of the files and instructions for this project in the complete tutorial on the Adafruit Learning System. The link is in the description. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm off to crash some beauty pageants. Okay, and we're back. Did, did it make you want to make a tiara film? Maybe. I want for you to wear it. Okay, I'm playing your song, so while you're trying to mess with me, I'm messing with you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it looks nice on you. Yeah. Super cool. Right. So Pedro and, and Noe made these, these 3D printed um, pieces that can go in front of your tiara or um, it's like, so like I, we were talking about like gender balance or whatever and, and I don't think of it so much as like who wants to make these projects, although like a ladies maybe mainly wear tiaras, although yeah. that looks quite fetching as you on you as a... Some like weird gothy Burger King that just yeah. didn't pass the focus group. Or like, or gothe yeah. at uh, Disneyland would be would be great. Um, but um, <laughs> I yeah. think that um, what I try to do is like appeal to people's people's other crafty things they like to make. Yeah. So like this tiara, it would be really easy for someone who's already into jewelry making or wire wrap jewelry or anything having to do with wire. So um, mm. that's kind of like how I try to think about it, like, oh, okay, you already know about jewelry making and you like making beaded jewelry or jewelry with wire, hey, this is just one step further than, than that by adding some electronics. So sort okay. of like use their existing hobby as a hook to learn oh. electronics. And I try that lots of different ways, with knitting, with sewing, with jewelry, with all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I think, um, I think people should spend some money because I gotta wear this thing for the rest of the show. <laughs> You could buy some LED strip. Yeah. You could buy some pixels to make your own tiara. You don't have to wear it for the rest of the show if you want to. Maybe we can do like a telethon one day. We can donate part to charity and like we'll do ridiculous things if the if the phones keep ringing. If the phones keep ringing. Yeah. We'll we'll spray it with never wet. We'll give you a tote bag. <laughs> okay. I'll wear I'll wear all of the tiaras at once. So um yeah. so this project Pedro and Noah made that one with um with this shape and the little it's got like clips on the back. Maybe if you want to go to the overhead, I could um, to the overhead. I can show you what it looks like. Um, see how it has these clips where you can put the NeoPixel strip inside it. So if you are more of the th you know MakerBot and uh, NeoPixel strip type of person and not the jewelry type of person you could make this kind of tiara, yeah. um, like the one Phil's wearing, and it's quite, also quite nice. Because um, it does, this one is, like I might maybe look, make it look easy, I've been making jewelry since I was in high school, so like a lot of yeah. um, third hand and uh, precarious soldering, like hold the wire until it's too hot, kind of action happening to make, to make this one. So it's, you know. Yeah, it's stunning in person, this is a really nice project. Thank you. I hope we see this at like lots of events and proms and who knows what else. Prom, I think it's perfect for it's perfect for prom. It's not a very expensive project. You can build on our Gemma starter pack, in yeah. fact, which comes with the Gemma and the battery and a couple pixels. You just need a couple more pixels, and if you want to make an ornate design, you could add a NeoPixel ring like this one. Yeah. Um, and um, it's like it's really not that expensive. I have the battery just like tucked into the hair elastic, and you can yeah. use these little coin cell, or you can use a rechargeable. Why, Polly? Um, it's a good, it's a fun project to get started. Whether you take the, this route or this route. Yeah, I have a couple of nice photos here. I just wanted to show. It's a nice close up, powered by Gemma. Really good work with this one. I like this because a little time lapse action. Bing, bing, bing. Yeah, the dragged shutter. So the flash goes off once and takes the photo, and yeah. the LEDs, which are emitting light, they drag across. Light this. painting. Yeah, yeah, light painting. And then here's like a nice close up. You can see everything. Yeah, you can either put the battery clip, like the battery in on the tiara itself, or you can um, tuck it into your hair if you want it to be hidden. Yeah. And you can really change up the design. The learning doc shows you a very simple diagram for this one, but it's really, NeoPixels are really easy to attach all together in a chain. Yeah. So you could like, I was thinking that an even step up from this one could be like three rings, no, tri Triforce style, and then it could have like a little figure eight kind of, I don't know, oh. the animations. Endless, anyway, you can download from Thingiverse this 3D file to make the, that one, or this 3D file yeah. to make this one, or you can just use an old headband if you don't have a 3D printer. Yeah. But we attack you from all angles here on Wearable yeah. Wednesday. <laughs> on a side note, we have the Lulzbot open source 3D printers. There are some people who said, hey Adafruit, don't just stock closed source printers. And I said, okay, great, find me an open source one and we can stock it. 
Um, they're in stock. If you want to vote with your dollars, um, we're going to carry all types of 3D printers, but now we also have an open source one. So it's in the store right now. It came in yesterday. Next up, Material Spotlight. I'm going to talk to you guys about the things I used to make the tiara because I got really into wire. And wire. We're going to talk about wire. This is solid core wire, which is what I made the tiara out of. You could make the tiara is out of Is that more hardcore than, is solid core more hardcore than hardcore? Like solid core. Solid core. Yeah. It's not like a band. If what? I were in a band, it would be Solid Core Tiara. No, I'm not. Okay, that's a nice name. <laughs> um, solid Core Wire, as the name suggests, is just one piece of metal inside a sheet thing. You can go to the overhead. And maybe you can turn on autofocus so I can come real close. Yeah. So I'll really get back into the frame and I'll just hold the things up. Yeah, here. I can also zoom in and zoom out if it's, if it's not behaving. It's doing it. Solid yeah. Core Wire. See, one piece of. Ooh. But like here, why don't you? Yeah, if you hold still, I can. Then turn off autofocus. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Sweet look at that. collaborative focus action. Okay, this oh. is solid core wire. I'm gonna hide my nails. I don't have nice nails today. It's winter. It's hard. Uh, it's one piece of metal inside the she thing, and you can see that it holds its shape pretty well. Um, it's good for making things like this that are stiff and you, they aren't going to move, right? Yeah. And your tiara could use solid core wire too because it's not really like have to be under a lot of stress. Yeah. The alternative is stranded wire, and stranded wire looks the same from the outside, and if it's the same gauge, it's hard to tell, but this is what stranded wire looks on the inside. It's lots of pieces, and they're twisted together, and you can see that if I bend it, uh, okay. it doesn't quite hold its shape as well as the solid wire, which now I have lost. But it's more floppy. It can withstand a lot more bending and bending and bending. Like when you look at suspension bridges, they're made out of like stranded steel cables. Yeah. And that's so that they can be flexible. In case there's a something going on. Wind. Yeah. Yeah. Wind. Bridges Earthquakes. Move a lot. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Waves. <laughs> Waves. So when we're doing stuff um, with wearables, if you want stiff, go for solid core wire. If you want flexible, go with stranded wire. But even then. Um, there's a difference even still. We talk about American yeah. wire gauge, and that's the oh. size of the wire. And when you go smaller, I have two different kinds of small. Yeah, we have a couple examples coming up. Oh, yeah, we have a lot of photos. Yeah. Show some? We have a couple examples. So this would be you want stiff wire. So what would you use? Yeah, that's solid core wire. Solid core. Yeah. Solid core stiff. Good way to remember it. Mm -hmm. okay. Solid and stiff. Yeah. And then. Um, Ooh, twice of us. Yeah, got to get rid of that. It's, your, <laughs> it's twice four, your birthday. Four TRs, less yeah. waiting. <laughs> yeah. And then we have. Um, this is this. a very thin solid wire we have in the store. In more fact, someone flexible. asked. To, it's more flexible than than a larger. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah. yeah, a larger gauge, which would be a lower number. Yeah. Wire, but it's still very brittle. Okay. And then what's this? This is a uh, weird silicone encased stranded multi wire. It's kind of yeah. like this ribbon wire that I have that I wanted to show on the overhead. It has multiple channels okay. of stranded wire inside it, okay. and it's a flexible chain. And then this is like the sort of more standard example of that, and it's a rainbow ribbon cable. And um, so they're all attached together. All of the sheathing is attached together, and yeah, that makes it that. easy when you want to run like to a set of NeoPixels that are far away and you want the wires to stay together the whole time. You can just yeah. peel off however many you need. And then um, this- That's super handy. Yeah. And this stuff is stranded, and like then it's all color coded for you. Even this stuff is stranded on the inside, and it's kind of a thinner gauge than what I was showing you before. Um, and so you can take this and you can zigzag it to fabric. The kind of wire that we were playing with, that we were playing with samples of, I wanted to show you that we want to try to get in the store. It's stranded wire with a silicone sheathing, so it's like this looks pretty flexible, but it's in like a PVC sheathing, the type of plastic, and then this is a silicone. It's like uber flexible, and I can mm. ball it up, and it doesn't, um, the silicone like prevents the wire from kinking. So the thing that makes wire break the fastest is like, is kinking it really sharply. Oh, and then it like cuts. And then it cuts itself, yeah. right? Because it bends, the mechanical properties get overtaxed, and it cuts itself. Uh. This silicone kind of like is bouncy, so it kind of prevents the wire from kinking all the way. Yeah. I want to try to see if we can get some of this in the store. Okay. Um, so, and then there's another, this one. You have this picture of this one? No, you don't have a picture of that one, which oh. is why I wanted to show you. This okay. One. Another kind of wire we have in the store that's a ribbon wire is just got fabric on the outside, and it's just got four different um, color coded stranded wires on the inside. So, this is good if you want a, um, a textile way to connect mm. to uh, like the Flora GPS kind of far away, because conductive thread far away on the GPS, you'll lose some signal fidelity. Yeah. 
but if you use one of these, you it's can... like cheating a little bit. It's like it's kind of it's kind it's of fa fabric, kind of fabric, but there's wire inside of it. Yeah, so you can okay. stitch this with a sewing machine or with a needle and thread, uh, but it's still got regular wires on the inside. Okay. Um, so remember when you guys are all like, "Is conductor thread good for this?" and I say, "Just use wire." You have options. Okay. There's lots of different kinds of wire, and I love it. Okay, and then um, we had uh, this was a close up of that wire, and then we have this other thing. We have lots of these. Are, so are these, these? these are little wire junctions. Um, they're, this one's a splice type, so you have like one, say you have like your power rail yeah. for your pixel and you want to add one more. This is a, a little thing that'll splice, it'll, like you, you pinch it together. It, uh, and it's permanent. It cuts, yeah, it cuts the wire sheathing and attaches it with this other wire so that they're, they have an electrical it does, connection. It does it on its own. Yeah. Like, so yeah. you don't have to do that. Uh -huh. That's super handy. That's really that, that'll help speed up projects if you're doing a lot of stuff. Yep. Uh, okay. I mean, and, and for wearable stuff, I don't think it can handle a lot of like bending and pulling. But if you're like prototyping on your desk or you're making something that that's um, stay still yeah. that goes on your head like this, like yeah, okay. it might even. Be, I always love using like technical things for aesthetic reasons. Like wow. um, if you look at the next type that we have, what is this? Uh, that's just a close up of the splice type. <laughs> <laughs> if you have like this kind, I think mm. is really beautiful. And if you had like a bunch of them. They might start to form part of the aesthetics of your project, yeah. and that would be a way to get around soldering. Looks like candy, but don't eat it. Okay. Don't, many yeah. of the things we make look like candy. I have to yeah, tell myself that all the time. Don't eat like it. Yeah, don't eat them. Wire junctions yeah. in many different types. The link in the description just goes to our whole like wire helper category. We have the yeah. two, the three, the coming backs of ten. Yeah, and then this is new. This is special. I don't think those are any. I think the other ones are newer than these. Oh well, new. I think new to the maker world because we no one had these for a long time, yeah. and then we we stocked them, and now I'm starting to see them. I'm around. starting to see them more. They're these I think are handy. a little bit higher, uh, little, higher amperage. Little levers. Yeah. These. Yeah. So these are for making lots of things go together. So if you have like a power, you connect power to one, and then they're all going to be connected. You can plug in power to, to um, two or four more connectors based on there. So we have the three type and the five type. Of these are really yeah. cool. Okay. They're like hipster wire nuts. Yeah. Only hipster because they're like bright <laughs> colors and yeah. and we, we mix to super stylize them in the photos. Whatever this is, Google's gonna buy it. <laughs> All right, so uh, so there are lots of ways to attach your wires together. Please don't be afraid of wire. And if you like, yeah. if you're a jeweler, look at all these electronics wires that are for you yeah. in the world. Um, do you know what time it is? What time is it? Well, it's time on planet. It's all again. <laughs> <laughs> is it fanfare time? It's fanfare time. I'm wearing all of the tiaras. All right. The fanfare, fanfare was indeed, fun fact, composed for me by a, by a, um, Joe Tuba, who made who has a, a brass band. Yeah. And then they performed it for me. Yeah. It was the nicest birthday present anyone's ever given me. You have a, a nice orchestra behind you. Yeah. Okay. And the lyrics are my name over and over. And don't forget the code is Tiara. <laughs> Obvious reasons, inspire tonight, 10% off everything stock. Next segment, tools we love. All right, I think this is becoming a favorite segment because you get really excited about some of the tools that we use around here. I love these wire strippers yeah. so much. And you know what? Unlike my calipers, they are definitely not going to cut me today. No. It made me really hard. Like after that, you're cut it's off. It's pretty right? hard to, yeah, if I cut no myself with these, it's, more for you. it's a hard okay, feel. Okay, these are Hacko, and these are super high quality and, um, we're, uh, it's one of the reasons I love them. So, yeah. like, there are we sell other pairs of wire strippers, and they're great for beginners in electronics getting started. If you don't have a lot of money to spend, um, but if you are finding yourself uh, wanting to make a fancy-looking project yeah. like this, where the the distance of the stripped wires really matters, um, and you find or you find yourself doing a lot of wiring, these will make your life a lot more fun. Like, you will enjoy using nice tools makes making stuff yeah. more fun because if it's nice and sharp and precise then you're not frustrated squeezing too hard trying multiple times to strip the same wire um, and uh, it, the process is really fun and your results come out nicer. Yeah and uh, you actually have some action shots here in the wild. These I are from the think. tutorial for the Tierra. Yeah. If you want to go make it you can look at these And photos. this is where you went in and you, you, you stripped the stuff, you snipped the stuff. Yeah so like whoop, wow. I attached wires and then um, like you create the shape by clipping them short so it's important yeah. to have a tool that can clip accurately and, and um, yeah. or precisely where you want it and also do a nice clean job. I see what you did there. You got the wire, we talked about wires for components, you got the wire stripper then you did this project. Did you plan all this? Well, when when I was setting up the show, I know that this week's project was the tiara, okay. and so then when I picked the other segments, yes, I picked things that had to do with okay. the tiara. Because I've been well, I, I do whatever I'm thinking about at the time, and guess what I've been thinking about a lot: These. stripping wires. Yeah. 
All right. This one had stripped the wire, the insulation completely off, and then in the simple one you're seeing here in the picture, okay. um, there's some insulation still on the wires. All right. Questions and answers. You got questions? Becky has answers. First up, Becky, is the floor accelerometer compass sensor affected by magnets? I want to use my Scotty vest pullover for a project, but it has high powerful magnets in its pockets. This is, looks it funny. A, yeah. is it a concern, concern? What? This looks funny with the yeah. TRs up above the. <laughs> yes, um, the accelerometer, the compass is affected by magnets. The compass detects magnets, that's what it does. So when, it's, when you're nowhere near a strong magnet, it's detecting the magnetic. Uh, field of the Earth and pointing you to magnetic okay. north of the planet. If you put it near a rare Earth magnet, it's going to point towards the north pole of the rare Earth magnet. Okay. So um, the accelerometer, however, is not affected by magnets. So you can still measure force and motion mm -hmm. um, with magnets, but you can't like hold the Neo Geo watch circuit to your watch band with magnets and expect the compass to still tell you which way north is because the it defers to the strongest magnetic field it's sensing. Okay. Next up. Uh, the people actually use magnets and compass. Um, compass sensors to, for robots, like put the magnets yeah. out and have it find the magnets because it can detect their fields. Becky, any idea if Gemma can be programmed from Arduino Droid? I doubt it since we made some um, modifications to Arduino to, uh, to handle the bootloader and talk yeah. to the Gemma and Trinket, so unless someone unless you someone makes those all the same alterations to Arduino yeah. Droid, I doubt it. Um, but I don't know because I don't If Arduino it. Droid is open source, then it's possible. So. We document okay. how to modify the Arduino IDE with all the like boards, uh, files, and stuff on the learning system. So by all means, please take a stab at it. Let us know how it goes. All right. Next, uh, this is from Leo. Is there a practical limit to chain shift registers? I'm making a jacket almost entirely covered in LEDs, and I want them to be all addressable. And I've gotten an awesome deal on shift registers. Or is it better idea just to use NeoPixels? Leo, did you also get an awesome deal on wire and your own time? <laughs> because mm. if two for one at the time store. <laughs> if you have all of the time and all of the wire and all of the shift registers, by all means, yeah. go for it. But if you are missing one or more of those components, like you don't have all of the wire or all of the time in the world, yeah. um, I would just make it with NeoPixels because your life would be easier and you will enjoy your jacket more okay. sooner. But you can do it with shift registers. I don't. I mean, practical limit is bigger than your jacket. Two more questions. This is from Thomas. Hi, Becky. Do you have any advice on attaching alligator clips to a NeoPixel ring? I find it very difficult to do correctly, as the connectors on NeoPixel ring are a lot smaller than the head of the alligator clip. I'm trying to, I'm trying to test a project and have tried attaching the alligator clips at an angle to ensure they don't touch anything else on the board, but the NeoPixel ring just won't light up, which would lead me to believe it's shorting somewhere. I know none of the components I'm using are faulty because I've tested them separately. Thanks, Tom. I have also noticed this. Um, it's difficult to, uh, to clamp a alligator clip to the NeoPixel ring because the input is really close to like yeah. one of the connections on we the, don't have on a lot the of room. pixel. Yeah. Guess what you should do is attach a wire to all three: the input, the I'm power, and the ground. I'm sensing a theme here today, Becky. And then, um, and then clip the alligator clip to the wire so that you're not accidentally shorting any of the pixels yeah, on You can always ring. unsolder the wire when you're done. You could always unsolder it. You could use one of our um, solder suckers. We have more than one, and mm. it's one of the tools we love: the solder sucker. Okay. Last question is from Marty. Who works with us at for this? Marty great. works here, which means he's not eligible for the giveaway. No prize for you, Marty. Looking forward to learning about washing wearables today. Oh, that's when our, we were... Yesterday, uh, last week. Yeah. Last week, yeah. Along the line of care and feeding wearables, here's my question. I imagine TSA doesn't like circuit boards, batteries, wires, or maybe even conductor feds. Do you have any suggestions for traveling with wearables? Oh, boy. Do you think I should make... I think I should make this video at some point, but it requires me to travel a bunch and take some B-roll. Yeah. Um, I have some uh, thoughts on this one, too. We both have lots of thoughts about yeah. traveling with electronics. Um, wearables specifically, though, um, if you there was an article I make a while ago where this guy who like trained with the TSA or like worked in airport security for a while and then was doing something else or maybe still is working in airport security wrote about what they're on Make. He wrote an article about mm -hmm. or an interview with one of the Make yeah. editors about what they're actually looking for when they're looking for like dangerous or scary things in your carry-on mm -hmm. luggage. And um, guess what? It's not really wire. So when my TV Be Gone jacket goes through the x-ray, yeah. which I've taken it on airplanes many, many, many times, I've flown with it, because it's just a regular jacket that I wear, and I wear it to the airport, and I put it in the bin, and it goes through with my shoes or whatever, and I've seen it on the x-ray. Never once have they, have they picked it up to look at it more closely. Yeah. Not once, not even if they search my regular bag. Yeah. And number two, when I look at it on the x-ray machine, sometimes you can see the screen, it just looks like it has a pair of headphones in the pocket, like I promise. Yeah. Batteries, um, like alkaline batteries, it just looks like you have a, a MP3 player with you. They're used to seeing bundles of wire inside your suitcase, curling irons, yeah. MP3 players and headphones. So just by virtue of batteries and pieces of metal are like 
besides, um, you know, the we don't want to get into the politics of who gets second screened at, at yeah, the yeah, TSA yeah. checkpoint, but when your stuff goes through the metal detector, they're not looking at who it's associated with, they're just looking at the stuff. Yeah. And only once have my, has my stuff ever been looked through for any reason um, based on what it looked like in the x-ray. Yeah, I guess here's just my short comment on this. So I've flown a lot around the world. I had all sorts of gadgets. I always had homemade gadgets. Uh, I was flying to maker fairs all the time with uh, robots I modified. And the thing is, there isn't, uh, unfortunately, uh, any black and white things that you can always predict with um, the TSA nope. because it's people. Yeah. It's people doing stuff and some of them are well trained and some of them aren't and I think that um, you, you just have to uh, be aware that when you're through that it's, un, it's a little unpredictable. It is and you have to be prepared to be really friendly and explain yeah. yourself if necessary. However, a lot of times people will comment on our videos and say like, oh, oh don't bring that to the yeah. airport. Guess what? Most of the time yeah. There isn't any problem, and like they don't even want to second screen it. But if there yeah. is a polite explanation of, oh, I'm an electronics enthusiast and I made this, and let me show you how it works, yeah. is kind of disarming for them too. Pretty yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one of the times when I was flying, um, I didn't have secondary screening. Someone just said, whoa, that's a lot of electronics. And I said, oh, um, I work for Make Magazine. And uh, he asked if he could have a copy of the magazine because he was interested in it. Yeah. And, I, and I always have extra copy or had extra copies I would give out. So that's my story, and you know, I'm, I'm always ready to talk about the stuff and explain it. Um, and, also, uh, like showing a website on your phone is kind of useful. So, I, I mean, yeah. legitim legitimizing it, right? Like I have a business card that says, yeah. has electronics yeah. in my title. But I, I can see how like some folks, even if they're questioned about something, they might just take it to, like, oh my gosh, you think I'm doing something bad. And sometimes the TSA agents may come across in a, in a bad way because they, they just saw the you know the, like 50 billion things all day today right I've also heard I mean like I've had professors who like had all they had was a box with a button on it and they were bringing it to an art installation to install it and it's like yeah. the reset button for the installation but guess what it's a red button on a wooden yeah. box and there's nothing else attached to it but wires and like yeah. the TSA sees that sometimes they might misconstrue something as threatening and yeah. you also can't you don't can't really get mad at them if they don't understand yeah however so as a person who makes wearable electronics for a living, I have never had anything taken away from me. Yeah. I've never had anyone look at me shifty. Um, yeah, I've corresponded with the TA, T TSA when there was issues that I was uh, able to help um, when I saw it come up and when I was writing for Make. And the people at the top um, are very uh, motivated to train everybody so everybody knows what to look for um, as far as their yeah, personnel and staff, but it's a huge endeavor. It's the, being efficient at, at finding the things they're actually looking for is yeah. their main prerogative. If they are, yeah, yeah. have all these false reports all the time, it just slows down the airport and yeah. um, waste their own time and money. So, yeah. so interesting uh, discussion. I don't think we'd be able to do a video where we're inside of the airport terminal. I don't think they would like to do that, but we could no. probably do something to washable uh, electronics. I just mean like cell phone vid of me like yeah. walking through and then I Here compile I those with some stuff. Yeah. These, however, there are restrictions for how many out of enclosure lithium polymer batteries yeah. you're allowed to have both in your check luggage and on board. Check so. your local airport and or TSA for things like that. Right, but just in terms of getting like, what is that thing in your jacket, Becky? It just looks like headphones on the x-ray, so it's never yeah. been a problem. All right, well, stay safe. Fly safe, folks. Thanks for asking, Marty. Um, so, with that, we're going to do the code. Tierra, 10% off. Flora wearables, expires 11.59, okay, so the 1.29 p.m. And now it's time to give something away. What are we giving away, Becky? A pair of flyer, a pair of wire strippers. Yay, If you, it, So everyone but Marty, <laughs> the four of you who ask <laughs> questions who don't work for Adafruit, um, I'm going to draw your, I think Marty already has a pair Marty, of these. when you get here, I'll just give you a pair. Marty, Marty has to have a pair of these already. Um, so if you want to enter for a future giveaway, all you need to do is ask a question about wearable electronics in the comments, and I'll answer it on a future show. You can ask here, or on Google+, Plus, or Twitter, or Facebook, or Carrier Pigeon, or email, or whatever you yeah. want. Okay. Who won the prize? The prize goes to Leo. Leo, congratulations. Leo, with all of your time and shift registers, I hope that this pair of wire strippers makes it easier for you to make your video jacket. Yeah. Uh, you can email support at adafruit.com to claim your prize. I'll also track you down on mm, Twitter, I mean, sorry, YouTube, it looks like. And uh, okay. congratulations. Happy birthday to you. I yeah. Happy, happy my birthday to you. Yeah. I'm playing the fan for a I can't tell because we don't you have audio. Tell, you can't tell. You can't tell. You can't tell at all. <laughs> I, would, I think I'm going to put my fanfare up on the blog post. You can download it as your ringtone. Oh, you know what we phone. can do? And when I call you, the fanfare will play. You know what I'll do? Maybe I'll do it in bed and I'll hide it in the, in the site. So every time people go on our site today, it plays that. And they'll be like, oh my God, what's going on? No, I won't do that. That's not nice. I hate I autoplay. I want, I want no autoplay. I would never. 
want to inflict no, autoplay on No somebody. ads on Adafruit, no social media malware buttons everywhere, no um, no blinking no Christmas tree projects, audio. no autoplay audio. Yeah, got to do that. Okay. Thanks for watching Wearable Electronics Becky Stern. We'll be back next week with a new project, cool stuff, That's materials, right. and tools. Okay. Until then. Bye-bye.